I'd so like to invite um, Alexander, who is founder and CEO of Venture Network Exchange, to share a little bit about tokenization themes, which we've heard uh, throughout, basically, uh, the conference. And then after this, we'll have a Q&A and a panel where we have all these panel speakers coming. Um, so without further ado, Alexander, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, number one, we are, uh, I'm very honored to hear about the developments of uh, the Litecoin Foundation and the new logo. I think this is a big event to both ways to announce the, the new developments of the, one of the major cryptocurrencies as well as the new branding. So I am very happy that we have a very good turnout to, to announce it. Uh, in my view, I got into the crypto space back in 2017, got quite interested by it. Um, but in my view, cryptocurrencies is just a one first step in the development of the blockchain space. Therefore, uh, with the development of it, in my view, we will be very gradually moving to the digital assets. Uh, majority of the payments which are done uh, in the world are not done for the uh, retail transactions. They're actually done for the financial assets. And uh, what we have heard as the main theme of the conference, tokenization, is actually what we're working on, i.e. digital assets. Um, there's a famous phrase, uh, actually it's a quote, about token eating the world. I do understand that with a huge drop from 2017 to March 2019, it may, be, it may sound counterintuitive. Um, we actually view it as a pause in the development of the sector. Uh, the spike of March 17 was probably uh, a kind of exuberance of the first adopters. However, if you look in the long term, uh, we think that the digital assets is the new class of financial assets that has been developing. You can see different waves starting from the 1950s of the new asset classes coming to the market and it fits the pattern of developing the totally new asset class with uh, the cryptocurrencies showing a way of how it is adapted in a decentralized manner, number one, and number two, peer-to-peer. -peer. These are important factors that have been introduced already to the payments and as, show, uh, 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 as shown by Litecoin. Now the second wave transformation of these principles into the digital assets. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions have already been the kind of trend since the beginning of the 2000s. It happened both in the financial platforms such as Lending Club, then you see a lot of the platforms such as um, uh, uh, invoice financing, factoring platforms, you see a lot of uh, democratization happening uh, in the platforms such as Uber, Airbnb. So this is surely happening uh, in different sectors. Financial is not one of them. What actually is going to happen, in our view, that there will be a convergence of the financial world, which is quite significant, uh, to the blockchain and crypto world. To give you an idea where we're moving into, we put into the perspective the uh, the amount of the money involved in the crypto space, roughly 120, 130 billion as of now, and the depth of the uh, private markets, 5.2 trillion. Just to give you an idea, the total uh, traded securities market, which are listed securities, is 72 trillion. So we're speaking about huge markets uh, compared to the current blockchain space, uh, out of which we, as a platform, are targeting venture capital, uh, 621 billion, a fraction of the private markets, but a significantly bigger amount than the crypto markets. There are a lot of players who are moving into the tokenization space. Um, you can see the segmentation by platforms, exchanges, um, tokenized VC funds. Most people early on, 2017, 18, uh, saw, even with the hype, that there will be new frontiers, and those who started early are actually now coming to the market. Um, finance is a peculiar uh, segment. It's regulated, 
uh, there are a lot of legal challenges. Therefore, for the guys who are entering the market now, it will take about one or two years to actually uh, launch their products, while the uh, exchanges and trading platforms and tokenized VC funds that actually started to do it in 17 are coming to the market now. However, what we see in the space is that the solutions that are on the market now are not yet ready for institutional investors. Institutional, by institutional investors, we mean banks. We mean UBS, Credit Suisse, Julius Bar. These guys require regulated solutions. They require transparency because most of them are actually not buying on their account, but they're actually uh, uh, buying it for someone else. So it's important for them to show governance and uh, security of the transactions and simplicity. Uh, up until very recently, the uh, blockchain space and cryptocurrency space has been for technically challenging and the big institutions are not really up for it. However, with all of this in place, what is still, in our view, missing is the real business case. We often speak to the competitors and they're talking about tokenization everything. Tokens eating the world, we can tokenize real estate, etc., etc. However, the business case is not to tokenize real estate or not to tokenize shares. There's no problem business problem per se in the tokenization of the real estate. Question number one is what do you tokenize when you tokenize real estate? Do you tokenize uh, cement? Do you tokenize bricks? Do you tokenize furniture? It's the same with the shares. There are plenty of the online brokerage firms allowing easy access to the shares. So what we think is important for the blockchain uh, solutions to start to move into the mainstream in the financial world is to actually first to, to tackle the real business cases. And the real business cases, in our particular case, is a VC industry. VC industry has been uh, kind of a byword of the finance for the past 10, 15 years with the emergence of the guys like uh, Facebook, Amazon being listed, um, uh, large Chinese companies which were financed by, by the VC. So it's actually been on the radar of the most people. Most people have heard that uh, inv early investors in Facebook made hundreds uh, X return. However, it's a very complex market, i.e. it's a market not for everybody. There's a very strong um, chain of command there. Um, Sometimes LPA documents can be up to 200 pages, so it's not actually a very, very intuitive and easy market. At the same time, it's a very closed market. The best funds require investor, limited partner, to have at least 10, 15, 20 million sometimes dollars. Uh, even in an average fund, uh, an LP will not be admi admitted with less than $1 million commitment. So actually the entry barrier is very, very high, and the particular problem that the VC industry is facing that it's a very, very long game. 10 to 15 years. You really need to lock your capital for a long period of time. What this means in practice for the early entrepreneurs? That means that the bigger and bigger funds are focusing on bigger and bigger companies. Which means that for an average guy starting a business somewhere in China, in Hong Kong, in Europe, it's very difficult to get access to the capital. The reason is very simple. It's a big play for big guys. The number of the capital committed to VC has grown by about half in the last two or three years, but the number of the deals going to the real startups has fallen by about 37%. That's a famous chasing the unicorn story. From the fund's point of view, everything is pretty simple. It takes a certain amount of time and money to do due diligence, and it's much easier to do due diligence on a ticket of 100 million, rather than to do due diligence on a 1 million or even 500,000, or in the best cases, $100,000 tickets. However, what it means for entrepreneurship, it means that the guys, you know, two, three people with good creative ideas, cannot have access to the capital. They are, of course, crowdfunding uh, platforms. However, crowdfunding platforms like most uh, platforms which are not run by professionals are not the best judge of whether the product or ID is good or not. 
In our particular view, VCs, professional VCs, they actually play a very vital role in developing the entrepreneurship. Sometimes, as a former VC or as a current VC, I can tell within two minutes of the conversation whether it flies or it doesn't fly. I can help guys with an advice how to structure their product or where to move. Nevertheless, coming back to the point of uh, long lo lockout period, high entry ticket and complexity, that means that there's in capital which is committed, but it's going only to the big guys. What we're trying to solve as a platform, we're trying to solve this issue. Uh, we're trying to create a marketplace where professional VC funds can issue tokenized portfolios and allow uh, average investor, at the moment qualified investor, to participate in their cash flow, which means it's a secondary platform, but by doing so, they will have more capital and by doing so, they will have more capital to invest into early companies. We can talk about externalities, we can talk about whether it's good in the short term or not. Uh, the amount of the uh, companies will not change. But if you increase the, the amount of the money going to the industry, inevitably sooner or later, accelerators, small, um, small uh, early stage funds, will also have a better access to capital and will be able to fund more companies promoting entrepreneurship. So that's actually the goal that we're trying to do. And we see digital assets or blockchain as an enabler of this technological revolution. What will happen afterwards is um, the shift of what is happening on se selective markets to the mainstream. However, for that to happen, you have to have a very strong institutional teams. The key for the regulated and uh, big entities is that they need to be in a secure regulated space. That's why in our particular case, we assembled a very strong team, starting from the former finance minister of Luxembourg, Mr. Luke Frieden, who's helping us with the license. We're very honored to have him on board. He's a chairman of the largest uh, banking group in Luxembourg, actually owned by Lenovo uh, Group. Um, we have uh, a former uh, chairman uh, and uh, CEO of the Brussels Stock Exchange, and we're very happy that Zinc, who is also a director of Litecoin Foundation, is heading our Asian operation. We think that by experienced teams, by attacking the real problems, we are actually able to move the blockchain solutions, uh, the digital assets into the mainstream for the, uh, for the other asset classes as well. We will focus on the VC or private equity because we're really committed to the entrepreneurship, but by paving the way and showing how it can be done for a particular asset class, we're pretty sure that others will follow and do it for the other markets. That's it, thank you very much.